So yeah. would love to hear a little bit about just you know, the origin story of Terviva, where it came from, and, and kind of how you came into it as a founder. When in grad school, that's when I heard about the Pangamia tree. I had never actually heard of it before. Okay. Um, but apparently it's, you know, as I was told at that time, it was very commonly planted in the subtropics. Uh, it was being looked at as a biofuel crop because it produced an inedible oil that grew on poor quality land. The company was formed in 2010, and we knew right off with a crop like Pangamia, which I'll put in the bucket of a lot of these kind of semi-domesticated indigenous community crops, we knew that the issue was going to be getting predictable yields. So a lot of empty agriculture acres for us to try to figure out okay. if we could grow Pangamia well. Pretty fortunate, uh, about seven years into it, circa 2017, we had figured out how to do that pretty well, which is sometimes tough with a tree crop because it takes a while. And we were able to raise more capital to look at the actual product value in the beans. One thing led to another, and we found out through some fairly straightforward, but still sort of secret sauce processing, we could take these beans, which are similar to soybeans, mm -hmm. and we could make food, feed, and of course, fuel. So we're okay. doing the full stack of possibilities with Pongamia that you could get with, say, a crop like soy or even palm. Okay. And that, I guess that kind of brings me to where we are now. We've built out this platform. We've launched a food product into the market. What are you hearing about fundraising or what are you hearing about you know, kind of with the SVB crisis recently, et cetera, what are you hearing yeah. folks coming in talking about with relation to, to raising money in the market? Prior to that, I would have said, you know, it's a tough market and, you know, I think investors are going to be pretty picky about which one of their even current investments they continue to support. Now, what was really nice to see with the SVB crisis is how the whole community went into gear to figure out, okay, for those of us that bank there, how could we help stabilize uh, any issues that SVB may have been causing turned out not to be a big issue, but you know, you always have this balance of we're all in this together to try to scale this whole opportunity. You have teams kind of internationally spread here, a little bit in Europe, a little bit in India, et cetera. So I'd love to hear about what Terviva is doing to build purpose with a global organization and, and you know, how do you keep that alive and fresh in the light of these sorts of, you know, disruptions and changes in the marketplace? Whether you're, you know, figuring out a different way to grow something with less inputs, or you're replacing, you know, a higher GHG emissions food product like meat with, you know, plant-based meat. By nature, everybody in this space is doing something helpful. For us, we try to take a very careful lens to what is it we uniquely can do as a new tree company mm -hmm. to help scale impact or purpose in the system. Besides the fact that we make, you know, really great plant-based ingredients and, you know, low carbon biofuels and things like that, we're also very focused on land restoration. Mm -hmm. Pangamia can grow where there's poor quality soils in communities. Mm -hmm. Typically, the opportunity to put something on that land will create more income for those communities than wasn't previously there. So that's another big lens we take to it. We call it land and livelihoods okay. are the two big lenses for us. When you look forward, you know, what's your forecast for, for 2024's food tech? I hope what we're seeing is a very clear demonstration of pathways to profitability okay. for some of these cutting edge products. So whether it's us with Panova oil, how have we figured out with our edible oil to create the kinds of industry partnerships that are going to allow us to scale that, get that supply out there, but also have a, you know, a really attractive gross margin. I think we're at that point in the industry where there's a lot of product out there. Clearly we can make it. Now can we scale it profitably?